What is up YouTube? We are back with another deck profile. This week we got my favorite dark type deck in the format and that is Gengar VMAX. Let's get right into the deck profile. We're going to start off the profile with Gengar VMAX, the main attacker. It is a three prize dark Pokemon with 320 HP. It is a single strike and that is important to note later on in the deck list. It has the attack Fear and Panic for two dark 60 times the number of V and GX in play of your opponents. So against some decks like Mew, we uh, we can add up a lot of damage that way, as well as we have G-Max Swallow Up. For three dark, it does 250. During your next turn, this Pokemon can attack. If we put a choice belt on that, we do 280, and that is the magic number this format, as that allows us to one-shot Palkia V-Star, as well as Arceus V-Star as well. We play three copies. When we're playing this, we're only ever gonna set up two because if they knock out two, they've won the game because they took in six prizes. But we play the third just in case we prize one as well as it's good discard fodder, fodder later on in the game, late game, mid game, whenever we don't need it anymore. Next up, we are playing Gengar VMAX. We are playing four copies again. We're all only ever gonna bench two Sometimes we'll bench the third one, so they have to knock out Gengar VMAX, Gengar V, and then another Gengar VMAX. And then the other one to two are Discard Fodder later on with like Quick Ball, Ultra Ball, or Tower of Darkness. Gengar V is a two prize dark Pokemon with 210 HP. The first attack, Dark Slumber for two dark, does 40, and your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep. Not that good. But the second attack can be very good in certain situations. And that is Pain Explosion for three dark. It does 190, put three damage counters on this Pokemon. Very good attack as you can one-shot some basic Pokemon Vs with a choice belt. Next, we're getting on to our support Pokemon. And we are playing two copies of Babarel from Brilliant Stars. We are playing the nice pre-release version as I got these for a pretty good price. So I thought, why not play them? It has the, uh, the ability Industrious Incisors. The only reason we're ever playing this card is to sit on our bench for the ability. The abilities affect once during your turn, you may draw until you have five cards in hand. We do play a lot of ways to discard cards. So you wanna limit, you wanna discard as many cards as possible during your turn. So you can Industrious Incisors to fill it up to hopefully find good cards that you need. Next up, we are playing three copies of Bidoof simply because we need to evolve into Babarel. You could go down to two. I like the third one just in case it gets knocked out. You prize one or you just need discard fodder later on in the game. The next Pokemon we are playing is one copy of Radiant Greninja. We are playing it for the ability Concealed Cards. You must discard one energy card from your hand in order to use this ability. Once during your turn, draw two cards. It's very good as it gets energy in our discard pile and we can get that energy back with Dark Patch later on in the game. The next card we play is one copy of Luminion V. We use it for the ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Very good if we need a boss for game, we need a Manu to disrupt our opponent, or it's early game, we have a bad hand, we can you play, bench this onto the bench and search for a professor's research to draw cards. And the last Pokemon we play is one copy of Crobat V. We can attack with this with Venomous Fang for one dark, one colorless, 70, and your opponent's active is poisoned. We don't ever want to get into that situation in the game because we'll probably lose if we are. We use this mainly for the ability Dark Asset. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may draw cards until you have six in your hand. Very good if you have a small hand or if you can thin your hand down, find this and bench it. You can draw cards, then you can support her. You can even induce your incisors. And there's even more ways we play for you to draw cards. Now for the trainers, we're starting off with four copies of Tower of Darkness. I experimented with many other stadiums like Training Court and Collapse Stadium. I have found that Tower of Darkness is the best. The effect on Tower of Darkness is once during each player's turn, that player may draw two cards. In order to use that this effect, that player miss, must discard a single strike card from their hand. That is why we play excess copies of Gengar VMAX and Gengar V because it can be discard fodder with 
Tower of Darkness in the late game, or we can Tower of Darkness away Tower of Darkness to draw two cards. We are then choosing to play Professor's Research. Basic, basic supporter, discard your hand, draw seven. Really good at just drawing cards early in the game and just filling our hand up so we can have lots of cards to play with. We only play three copies. Usually you see the four Research, four Marnie, four Boss. We are playing a different approach with this list and we are playing three Professor's Research. The next supporter we play is three copies of Boss's Order. Switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. Very basic supporter. Again, we are playing three copies as we do want this late late on in the game, mid game, but not really early because we can draw with Babarel, Crobat, and Radiant Greninja. So playing a draw supporter isn't important during the later stages of the game. Next up, we are playing Marnie and we are playing three copies of Marnie. Again, a basic supporter card. Each player shuffles their hand, puts it at the bottom of their deck. The player that played this draws five and your opponent draws four. Great disruption, great supporter. We are playing three as we do have other ways to draw cards. Next up, we are playing Dark Patch. Attach a basic dark energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench dark Pokemon. Really good with the Radiant Greninja's Concealed Cards ability, as well as Ultra Ball, Quick Ball, and Research can all get dark energy into the discard. We are playing four copies because that's the maximum we are allowed to play. Very, very, very important card in this list because this allows us to power up Gengar VMAX without using Single Strike Houndooms. Next up, we are playing four copies of Ultra Ball. Discard two cards from your hand. Search for any Pokemon. Very basic item card. Very good in this deck as we want stuff in the discard to draw with Industrious and Sizes and use Dark Patch to get energy onto our Gengars. Following Ultra Ball, we are playing Quick Ball. We are playing four copies. Discard a card and search for a basic Pokemon. Kind of like Ultra Ball, but a little bit not as good, depending on your scenario. Guess that's a lot of Pokemon, helps us thin our hand, helps get dark in the discard. Very good card in the list. Following Quick Ball, we are playing Evolution Incense. We are playing four copies. Search your deck for an Evolution Pokemon and put it into your hand. Very good card, gets us Gengar VMAX, gets us Arba Barrels. We don't have to discard. We can burn this card, play it for no effect, basically. So that's why we are playing the full four copies, as we do need those pieces when we need them, but it's also a card we can just burn later on in the game. Next up, we are playing Switch. We are playing three copies, very important card. Switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon. Since G-Max Swallow Up says this Pokemon can not attack during your next turn, we need to get it out of the active so we can switch into another Gengar VMAX that's powered up or switch into a Pokemon that has a air balloon attached so then we can retreat back to the Gengar, basically resetting it. Following that, we are playing a Choice Belt. We are playing two copies of Choice Belt as we usually are only going to attack with two Gengar VMAX. The effect on Choice Belt is the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active V. Very good because GMAX Swallow Up is 250. With this, it has 280. That knocks out Palkia V Stars as well as Arceus V Stars. Next up, we are playing Air Balloon. We are playing two copies of Air Balloon. The effect on this is the retreat cost of the Pokemon this card is attached to is two colorless less. Everything besides Gengar VMAX has two colorless or less retreat cost. This basically gives them free retreat. As we do want Choice Belt on Gengar VMAX anyways, it doesn't really matter. And the last item card we are playing is one copy of Ordinary Rod. Choose one or both. Shuffle up to two Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck or shuffle up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. You can do both. You can pick one of each or just one of them. Very good card. This allows us to get back any missing pieces that we have to discard early on, as well as Gengar's late in the game, so we can discard them with Tower of Darkness. And then finally, for energies, we are playing eight copies of basic dark energy. We need to find these naturally to attach per turn, discard with concealed cards on Radiant Greninja, as well as use as discard fodder for Ultra Ball and Quick Ball so we can Dark Patch it back on. I like the 8. I was at 10 at one point. 10 is a bit too much. I find 8 is the magic number. So that is the deck list. What do you guys think? Will you be taking this to any regionals, internationals, worlds, maybe just your local tournaments, or will you try this online? Let me know what you would change, what you would add, and let me know in the comment section what deck profile you want to see next week. 
Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next YouTube video.